All right, so we'll move on to terminal units. If we go now to um, the mechanical level, let's say the mechanical um, level two in this case. And again, I'm adjusting my views here so that, that they're set up pretty well. Okay, one thing I definitely want to check is that my ceiling is at the right level that I want it to be. In order to do that, probably the most efficient way to do it is to go ahead and uh, place a section. That way I can see exactly what's going on in this building. Okay. So right now there's there's no there's no floor right now. So just pretend there's a floor there. But um, this is the actual ceiling tile. I believe I placed it at uh, at um, nine feet above level two, which is right here. Pretty fairly typical. But that looks pretty good. That has everything that I, that I want to have at this point. Okay. So um, I didn't really show you this before. I'm stepping back a little bit now. But what I do want to show you is the, the, system, the, the system browser tool. If you go under Analyze, System Browser, it creates another plane or another pane that you can work with. Right now, everything is unassigned at this point. Okay, so I have, I have default sanitary equipment, so on and so forth. Okay, for your, for your assignment, um, I wouldn't worry about this at the moment. But what you can do is create piping systems, um, so on and so forth. So it's, it's really useful on that behalf. Um, but we, I just wanted to show you that that tool is available for you. Um, one other thing that you can do is filter stuff out. So if I right click on where it said systems, um, I can specify if I want to look at systems, if I want to look at zones. We haven't talked about that. Um, or if I want to look at a specific discipline, you can do that as well. Really useful if you have, um, you know, a very large project with a bunch of different systems. It allows you to, to filter some some of the uh, some stuff out that you don't want to look at at that point. Okay. All right. So now we're looking at um, <coughs> floor plan level two. Actually, I want to look at uh, the ceiling mechanical plan because I'm what I'm going to do is place these components into the ceiling it, itself. And let's go ahead and start dropping some terminals into the ceiling. So if I go to the Home tab, Air Terminal, let's see what I have available. It looks like I have three types right now, the, the exhaust grill, a return diffuser, and a supply diffuser. None of these diffusers, um, or these elements at this point, um, are hosted by anything else. So what that means is if I were now to, drop, to drag the supply and put it into this space, it's going to go directly to the work plane um, of that view itself. By default, that is level two. So it's going to place this diffuser on the ground, unfortunately. What I want to do is uh, create or, or bring in or load a diffuser that's hosted by an actual surface. So I'll have the opportunity to either put it um, or to put it in the ceiling in this case or any other surface, maybe a wall and put it or, you know, put it vertical on a wall, for example. That's a pretty good example of, uh, of hosting. So to do that, we're going to go in to load families and mechanical components, air side components, and let's see, air terminals. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and bring um, just the hosted equivalent of what's already in the project. So here we have a 
exhaust diffuser, return diffuser ho hosted, excuse me, supply diffuser hosted. So I'll select the, all three of those, bring them into the project. Okay, so let me go ahead and at this point we'll, we'll start with the supply diffuser. And notice how um, the, the elements before didn't have your option of where you want to place them. Now you actually have options. You can place on a vertical face, um, on, a, on a face itself, or on the work plane. So you can see how right now that I have vertical face, if I put it on the ceiling tiles, it's going to have a big circle with the line through it saying that, you know, there's no vertical face there to place it on. So if I were to go to that wall, for example, I should be able to place it. That's not what I want to do. So I'm going to go to place on face and just drop it into the ceiling. And I'll just go ahead and put, I don't know, three, a few, three, something like that. Better, a better way to do that would probably be the array tool. You can definitely make sure that all these dimensions are right, but we'll, we'll leave that up to you guys. Okay. So again, I'm not 100% sure where these dropped in, so I definitely want to make sure. It's a little difficult to see it from this view, so um, I'd rather prefer going to the section view and verifying that those, term, uh, those air terminals are being placed in that ceiling. And there you go. That's a good placement. So, it's definitely working. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and place uh, some of the return diffusers. Again, using the hosted ones. Place on face. And we'll just put them on the other side. There's a whole science to where you place these diffusers. We're not... This is not that class, so as long as you have somewhat evenly spaced um, diffusers, supply diffusers, and uh, return diffusers, that's okay. Um, typically, just to give you some feedback, typically there's definitely more supply and less uh, return. In this room, for example, you can see that little grate there, that's a return. That's a return. The supply error in this case is, is provided by these things. And these are uh, active chill beams. So if you look above them, there's going to be a connection to it, and it's blowing fresh air down. Um, but yeah, so you, you, you know, you've got six versus two. But this is, that's pretty typical of how that, that's set up. <clears throat> so although on I'm not going to place a exhaust grill in here. I'm going to I'm going to well I'm going to quickly place it in just to show you how it looks how this how the symbols look for it. Um and then explain that a little bit. But there's I'm not going to be connected connecting anything to it. I just want to show you what the symbols look like. And this is uh again typical annotation symbols for supply return and exhaust. You can see how supply has an X in it. Return has uh, just one diagonal line. And then <clears throat> exhaust has a, a diagonal line and a half diagonal line. Um, that's, that's standard. That doesn't mean that you'll always see it that way. Usually what will happen is you have, to look, you have to look at the symbols sheet on a drawing set in order to verify that that's the right um, way to look at it. Another thing that you notice is these little arrows. Again, the supply is pointing out. That's, sig that's signifying that air, that this diffuser is going to blow air in all directions. So you could have, for example, this, this supply diffuser up against a wall, and you don't want it blowing it at the wall. You just want to blow it out and then across. So to illustrate that, if you select this supply diffuser, and you go to Element Properties, Instant Properties, you have an option of deselecting one of these arrows. So, I don't know, let's, let's just say the left arrow, for example. So now you can see how it got, got rid of that. So. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this exhaust grill because we really don't need it at this point. 
OK, so what we have now is um, three supply diffusers, three return diffusers. Let's go ahead and place a air handler in here, and then we'll go ahead and connect these diffusers to the air handler itself. So if we go, let's see, we're already at home. Mechanical equipment. Let's see what kind of air handlers are already here. Um, we have a split system vertical. Uh, vertical's fine, um, although we're going to be placing this one in the attic, so it would be a lot nicer if we can find a horizontal equivalent of this. There's none right now loaded in the project. So let's go ahead and load one, one up. Um, you'll find them under mechanical component, uh, air side, air handling units, and then let's look for that horizontal one. So right here, here we go. Okay, so right now if I drop this in, um, although I'm in the mechanical, uh, the ceiling mechanical view, if I drop it in, it's going to drop it in uh, right at zero, zero level two, which is fine, but we want this to be in the attic. attic. So um, what I'm going to do is just drop in. You can see from the 3D drawing that it actually dropped it in down below. So what I'm going to do is go to that view and offset it so it's back up again into the attic space. So I'll select it, element properties, instant properties, and you should have an option here. There we go, offset. So 10, 10 feet she'll do. The, uh, I believe I set the ceiling at 9 feet, so 10 feet gives it, gives it room. You can see how it disappeared from this plan, but if I go, it should be visible from this plan. Okay, it's not. So let's go to this plan. So there, so it's actually there, but I want, I want it to be visible. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. What I'm going to do is uh, change the view range of this one, and hopefully that, that allows me to see um, the air handler. So view properties, and then um, all the way at the bottom, you should see a view range. And let's see how it's set up. <coughs> all right, so we'll change this to you know, five feet above level three. All right, so this is the same thing. Well, it won't let you just change one. You have to change both. All right, there it goes. There's our air handler. So if I select the air handler, very similar to the plumbing fixtures, if I can select it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually come over here. That didn't work either. There we go. It's a little, little odd. OK, so again, this is working around so I can see everything at once. I think this is a better image to actually show it. And what I'm going to do is, um, Again, change the view range and go down so I can see those diffusers and hopefully select them and be able to select them all in one view. <clears throat> oh, I need to put a negative in front of these. All right. Good. And I can select them. So all right, we're we're in we're in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and select my air handler. You can see how there's many many connections to them. Um, so if you want to know what they are, one quick way of doing that is, con is hitting the connect into, and then it gives you a list of some of them. So connection one, which isn't showed on here, is probably the power, 
which is um, right. I mean, you can see it is uh, is five five six C V A or uh, volt amps. Um, let's not worry about that when you have connections. Two, connection two, three, four, and five. Connection two and three are hydronic connections, so it's either uh, water or uh, refrigerant for that one. Um, connection four and five are the ones that we want to deal with, return air and supply air. Um, what's, in, what's interesting, because it's really difficult, if you look just at this component, you don't really know what component is for return or supply, so this is really how you figure it out. Um, this one on this side is 20 by 20, 20 inches by 22 inches. This is 11 inches by 20 inches. So if I go again to connect two, you can see that the 11 inch by 20 inch is the supply, and the other the other one is return. So what I'm going to do, um, what I want, so now I know where to connect all the supply ones to. So again, the supply is on the north side of the building, so um, just to make this easy, I'm going to rotate this piece of equipment so that connection is also facing the north side. So I just press RO for rotate. Rotate in the position I want. And now I'm going to create the actual routing. Again, there's a auto generate route option. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the manual option, which is a lot a lot simpler, um, but yeah, but we don't, we don't we don't expect you to use the auto generate, um, which is much it's much more difficult. It probably comes out with if you can do it right, it'll come out with uh, you know sizing everything is going to be sized correctly, um, so on and so forth. Uh, to step back just a little bit, I want to talk about these diffusers. If I select a diffuser. You can see how in the options bar you have flow, and it'll give a flow. At, by default, these are these are 500 CFM. CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. It's just the amount of air that these things are rated to, to push into the space. You can also um, you can change that if you want. Um, again, when you use the auto generate, it's going to use this number and determine how large the pipe needs to be. Um, it's typically those pipes are sized on um, re reducing the amount of uh, friction loss you would get inside the pipe, also as well as uh, reducing the speed of air inside the pipe so it doesn't make noise. For example, you don't you don't want to have uh, really fast moving air in a small pipe because it's just going to create a lot of noise, especially if it's close to an occupied space. So that's that's the idea behind how do you, how you size piping. Um, so yeah, so you can change these. By default, all of them right now are set at 500 CFM. It's okay for your project just to use a default at this point. I mean, really, that's a, a whole other class on how how you would size, how you, how you actually size that. <clears throat> okay, so back to the air handler. What I'm going to do is create a main branch, uh, a, a main, yeah, I guess a main uh a main for the supply, and I'm just going to route it along the north side of the building. At that point, I'm going to go ahead and connect each one of these ter uh, uh, air terminals directly to that main. So that's the idea. And really, for the return, it's going to be exactly the same. I'm going to I'm going to come out, route it all the way across, and just connect them as well. So pretty pretty simple stuff. One of the easier ways I can one thing I can do is go directly to home, hit hit the duct tool, assign the offset that I want, and just go ahead and run the size um, and go ahead and run it. Um, if I select the tool just really quickly to show you, you have an option of uh, changing the type. So you can go to circular if you need to, um, rectangular, circular duct if you need to. Um, that's no problem. Here you have, you can specify the width and the height of the duct, the offset. You can lock it into place if you want. Again, you can use these justify and attach uh, tags on placement if you want. So just some options for you. What I'm going to do is um, go directly to the piece of equipment, right click on that connection that we already know is supply, and then draw duct. What happens again is it, it automatically selects the correct size that's needed for that connection. It also provides the offset um, so that it comes off straight off that connection. Um, you can change that if you want. I'm going to go ahead and leave it the same and just route, route it using that offset. 
So the first bet, the first uh, selection, I'm gonna I'm gonna select a little off, a little, um, a little off of the piece of equipment. The reason why is it requires a bend there, and if you don't have enough space for that bend, it's gonna give you an error. So I definitely want to go off a little bit and then take a left turn and go and go all the way down the down the side of the building. Alright, so that's probably good right there. Alright, and let's look let's go ahead and look in 3D just to make sure that it looks like it's making some sense here. And that actually looks pretty good. You know, it's it's in the attic, attic, it's positioned ready ready to accept those air terminals, the branches for those air terminals. That's not that's actually not bad at all. Say that. How'd you bend it? So mm -hmm, you draw you you, know, you, you draw your first piece and then um, just do a ninety degree turn, and it creates that that sweep for you automatically that connection. Okay. Now what we're going to do, and I believe you can uh, probably do this in well we'll we'll do it in this view. That's fine. Um, now we're going to go and connect these air terminals again to the to the main. So if I select that, connect into, there's only one connection of it, so it should be fairly simple. And I just go ahead and click that. And there you go. So let, let's finish these off real quick, and then we'll go back to the 3D view, and I can show you what it looks like. And there you go. So pretty, fairly simple, not too bad at all. Okay. Cool. All right, we'll go. And then let's go ahead and uh, create the other side. This one I'll work through a little bit faster because it's much, much easier. Um, if, you, if you want, just to show you a little bit a, a different way of doing this is um, I can go ahead and just draw the pipe right, like right out. So before I do that, I want to see what's going on <clears throat> here. Let's see. Okay, so it doesn't tell me elevations. That's what I wanted to know where the elevation's at, so where I, know, where I need to know to place it. What I can do is go to this pipe. It should give me the offset. That's roughly about, about a foot. So I'm gonna use that. I know that the size coming off has to be 20, 20 by 22. So go to home, select the duct. We'll go 20 by 22. Something else, uh, as far as convention goes for ducks, the the first number when you go 20 by 22, the first number represents the um, what you can see, right? So this this width is going to be the 22, and the height, the second number will be what you can't see in that dimension. So that, that's just convention. All right, if I hover over, you can see how that's, that's the actual connection. It even tells me that, which is pretty cool. You select it. Come off again, give it enough space so it can make that bend. And then we'll go all the way down. And now we'll repeat the process of uh, connecting these to the, the actual, <clears throat> the actual uh, main, a return main. All right, 
So let's let's check out how that ended up looking. There you go. Now we have our plumbing, very basic plumbing system and very basic um, HVAC system.